I'm Polly Toner for Different Drummers. What does it take to be the next Barack Obama? A leader for a new generation. To find out, let's welcome some young, up-and-coming leaders in the United Methodist Church. Deontay Brantley is a member of South Lawn United Methodist Church and drummer for the Black Methodist Church Renewal Young People's Choir. And Stephen Reedus is Vice President of the Northern Illinois Conference United Methodist Church Youth Initiative. And Reverend Dwayne Grant is pastor of Re Resurrection United Methodist Church and director of the Youth Initiative. Welcome to all of you. Thank you. What is the Youth Initiative? Uh, Black Methodist for Church Renewal has a task force that they form and it's called the Youth Initiative. And basically what we're doing and our mission is to help all of the, or bring together all of the young people in about over 40 uh, United Methodist churches, but not only the African American, the also the Hispanic, Latino, Caucasian. What we want to do is form an initiative to actually empower all young people. Fabulous. And you are a vice president yes, of that initiative. What does it take to lead young people today? You have to be inspiring. Uh, you have to have some type, bring some type of excitement into what you do. Um, no one likes to follow anybody who's doing the same thing or who's doing something that is slow motion. And we live in a fast moving world, so you bring some excitement, or you bring some um, dynamic leadership, and you can you know, lead young people to do almost anything you need them to do. Okay. And you are also involved in youth ministry. Correct. What kind of leaders have been inspiring to you? Well, the leaders inspiring to me are my father, Dwayne Grant, mm -hmm. you know, pastors, pe previous pastors, you know parents, grandparents. And what is it about them? What draws your attention? Well, their faith in the church, you know. Um, you know, they brought me up in the church, so made me want to be a better Christian also, you know, so that's what So their own example? Right, great example. Okay. And what kinds of things is the Youth Initiative doing so far? Right now we've got what we call the YPC, which is the Young People's Choir. Then we have uh, the uh, liturgical dance ministry that's also a part of that, and that's basically all of the dance ministries in the 40 uh, Black Methodist for Church Renewal churches. So they're doing, they're, we're, 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 we're working with the youth and helping them strengthen their faith and also keeping them active because we, <clears throat> our, a lot of youth feel that they're not represented. Okay. And, and our mission is to help them feel, you know, encouraged. Uh, we want to let them know that, yeah, you know, we love you and that we support you and that we're going to do everything we can for you. And that's, that's really what the youth initiative is about. And we're using the choir and the liturgical dance ministry and some advocacy things, some things that we're going to be doing politically just to help the young people to come together. What is it like when you perform? It's amazing, you know. Um, I just love performing, playing for the Lord, playing the drums. It's my passion. You know, every time we go somewhere, you know, I try to give my all, give 100%, play my best. What kinds of things are you doing to draw youth into this youth initiative? Uh, promotion, promotion, promotion. Uh -huh. uh, put, getting the word out there. And how it, do you do that in 2009? Man, you know, Facebook, uh, MySpace, YouTube, <laughs> yeah. flyers, you know, word of mouth. Just getting involved, you know. Uh, Technology is a beautiful thing, and people, a lot of people frown on technology and say that you know, it, it could be harmful and things like that, but I feel that you know, if it's out there, why not use it? Uh, if you can, you can find almost anything on the internet, so why, not, why can't you find some good Christian uh, material on the internet? And just good Christians, good United Methodists who are just trying to strengthen the, the church. The youth uh, are really the church, because uh, as the older adults leave, someone has to be there to keep the house up, and someone has to be there to clean and uh, make sure things run smoothly. And that's, the youth that we have now. And if you don't embed it in them now, that this is what, you know, the right thing to do, these are positive avenues, then as they get older, it'll be harder to bring them back in and they uh, won't be so open to coming back to the church. How has what you've learned being youth leaders maybe impacted what you will do in the future or what kind of a leader? We're talking about who, who will be the next Barack Obama. Have these experiences been informative? Uh, yes. Uh, you really learn to think on your feet. Okay. And you really learn to prepare. Uh, uh, dealing with youth and um, even sometimes young adults, a lot of things don't go, uh, maybe don't go as planned or some things do go as planned, but you just learn to think on your feet. You learn to interact with people of all different races. Uh, 
as we said, the BMCI initiative, the youth initiative, we're trying to be the uh, Latino, Hispanic churches, the Caucasian churches, even if so, Asian churches. And um, just really learning how to interact with different people. And you find out that you're really not that much different from anybody uh, else. And everybody goes through their own different problems, but a lot of problems are really just community type problems that everyone is involved with. And uh, you just learn to interact. You learn to, um, to stand in front of the crowd and you really gain confidence about yourself. Uh, so it's been a great experience. I see your pen says Rethink Church. Does yeah. that theme intersect with your work with young people? Yeah, it does. That's a new campaign at the United Methodist Church. And uh, myself and some of, the, some of the other young pastors, we are getting fully behind the Rethink Church campaign. And what it is, we're trying to do church differently. And, and where it's coming from is not using church as a noun, but using church as a verb. And I'd like to say using church as an action verb. Mm -hmm. making sure that we're getting out in the community, that we're, 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 we're talking with our young folks, we're bringing our young folks in. Like I'm involved with Cease Fire, uh, the Southwest Organizing Project, and I'm, I'm dealing with, uh, uh, with, with those projects, not only folks that are involved in the United Methodist Church, but also with rabbis and you know people uh, from the Catholic Church, and we're just trying to all come together, and we're trying to do positive things. It sounds like both of you were brought to the church by your families. Your families were involved. Yeah. What do you think, is there a difference between opportunities to be youth leaders in a religious environment versus in your schools or in the community? No, I don't think it's really a big difference. It's just, you know, you just have to have the mind to really get out there and try to work hard and have, you have to have a good imagination because you have to reach out to those and you know, try to gain their attention. Do you have any favorite stories, favorite memories of events that you've been a part of? Um, 2007, I went to a SPLAT. Uh, C, it's an acronym, See, Play, Learn, Act, Teach. Uh, sponsored by the United Methodist Church. And there were 9,000 youth from across the nation wow. of all different ethnic backgrounds. And, and this was a great experience. We are in Greensboro, North Carolina. And you met with a lot of people that you wouldn't normally meet. You wouldn't normally sit in rooms with them or hold conversations with them. And those type of events, you form long-lasting relationships. And you see them, you know, maybe another couple of years, or sometimes you don't see them ever again. But you try to keep in contact with them as much as possible. But you learn so much about, you know, what's going on in, in Montana, or what's going on in Kansas, and Florida, and California. And sometimes you get so bogged down with trying to do ministry and trying to do the right thing in your own city that you forget there's a lot of things going on in other places. And you really learn how to interact with people and help other people, and sometimes they come around and help you. And it's always good to just do ministry with, with a lot of different people.